absolutely incredible. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, uh, obviously you're going to stick around to the end now, but um, for those who may have just joined, as I see a few of you have, I'm your host, Christian Evanko. This is our band show, and we are live with Sound of a Smirk. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you for having so us. Thanks for having of course. Us. It, it, it's really our pleasure. What a powerful way to start this uh, this <laughs> night off. I mean... It's only going to go up from here. Trust me, I've uh, heard the songs, and um, it's pretty good. Pretty good night we have planned for you. So let's just start off with we've been here all day, guys. We've been working hard, but we're finally doing this thing. We're finally live. How are you guys feeling? Feeling great. Hot. Great. Yeah, a little warm. Excited. A little warm. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. Hot and excited is uh, the way I like my rock and roll. So uh, <laughs> No, but for real, guys, sound of a smirk, 13 years in the making, only getting better. Talk to me about it. Oh God, man! Uh, this started as a solo project for so long, and uh, yeah, it's been like ten years now. Where it's built into a band, and just every year in ten, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Uh, it's kind of wild to me. It's it's wild to us too. It's, it's definitely wild to us. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I feel like I've been here forever. <laughs> in life. So or yeah, Jesse. Let's me. let's um. I do want to kind of get everyone's origin story here because you know I've known you for a little while I, I like we said earlier you know it's kind of like we've always been in the same room and we've had a brief and very nice conversation but it never really we never had the chance to really sit down and talk and I've always loved your writing style I've always felt Thank like you. you kind of I felt like you had a hard time back in the day fitting in on either the true punk shows or the true hardcore shows because you're just so versatile as a songwriter. And I've only seen that dynamic grow here as you went from a solo artist to a band. So, so why don't you take me from the beginning and we'll work our way up to how each of these amazingly talented musicians around you became a part of the project. First off, thank you. Uh, that means a ton. Um, it's wild because the Hudson Valley has an amazing music scene. The local music is crazy. You hear so many different styles and so many different artists really kind of put themselves out there and um, just trying to fit into these little pockets was definitely a little difficult. We, to me, I've always wanted to turn Sound of a Smirk into a band. That's why it never started as my name or anything of that sort. So even acoustic, it was always uh, a band in a sense. And um, yeah, I, I guess I just wanted to kind of put all the influences I love and listen to out on display and it's so much more of like an emo idea like that whole genre is kind of like my bread and butter so it's it's been fun I kind of I love these guys as friends and brothers and as musicians they add so much more than I could ever do myself Awesome. So let's talk about some of those influences that originally inspired you when you first kind of set out to start this project. Yeah. Um, back when I first started really playing the music that I was playing and, and doing the acoustic stuff, I had such an idea that Bon Iver was going to be the, the end goal of it. And then the more that I wrote, I don't write songs like Justin Vernon. Um, so I realized how, how much I was kind of pushing over that and getting into, I mean, bands like Sunny Day Real Estate, who I love and they're like staples of emo, and bands that I was listening to and seeing live like Manchester Orchestra, and then even solo artists like Kevin Devine, who changed his whole sound and is so versatile in that way where he still plays acoustic, but then he plays Kevin Devine and the goddamn band and they just, it's, that's all I want. I want to be able to push everything I write with the people who I know will push it further than I ever will. Yeah, for sure. And I think I've kind of always got that sense when listening to your music, but I do love how you stayed true to that because I feel the scene that we all grew up in, my beloved, and I'm sure your guys' beloved too, Poughkeepsie scene, um, which I miss with all my heart, but it was it was very um, one thing or the other, I felt. You know, you were either a hardcore band, guilty as charged, right? Or you're in a punk rock band, also guilty as charged. Very and there was, yeah. uh, <laughs> a lot of us are, there was like very little crossover. And that's kind of why I, I sort of said, like, I felt like you were simultaneously able to play both of those kind of shows that we would quite often see in our local scene, 
but also kind of always be the one that stands out. And of course, later on, we had good friends of mine like Luciano Ferrara and former, you know, uh, performer of the show, Johnny Mana, kind of come along and, and bring that acoustic guitar element to the scene. But for a while, man, it was kind of just you, you know, and you definitely stuck to your guns in that regard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I take your word for it. Uh, it's, it's hard you know, hearing that kind of stuff, but I appreciate it so much. Um, yeah, playing with, I played with Johnny and I played with Luke and uh, Tuck, who's in Fit for a King and Off-Road Minivan. We played acoustic shows back in the day and I played with so many other artists, Frankie and His Fingers, um, Frank McGinnis, he's amazing. And we played acoustic shows back in the day as well. And, and it's just amazing to see these acoustic artists or even front men of bands kind of step back uh, and just do what they want and do things a little differently in, in that case. Yeah, no, for sure. And something you did differently was later on join and make this thing a full band. You know, you said that that was something that you initially always wanted to do, but it took a little while. So let's bring in the rest of the guys here. Who was first to come along and what made you finally make that decision to, yeah, this is no longer a solo project. I want to be in a band. That would be me. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I was kind of dragged you? into this, and I need help <laughs> getting out. No, it's, uh, in all seriousness, uh, Jesse put out like a post uh, in the Hudson Valley Musicians Forum uh, about eight years ago. Yeah. That least. yeah, that he needed a drummer, and I was like kind of just screwing around playing rock band by myself, like teaching myself how to drum, and I was like. Sure, I could do that. Were you like nailing songs on expert? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're definitely qualified then. <laughs> yeah. And you are a killer drummer. So that's oh, actually, if that is how this actually started, that, that is. That is how this started. Yeah. Wow. That. Yeah, that is just fantastic. screwing around the rock band and then, you know, just someone saying, hey, I need a drummer. And I'm thinking for a second, like, I could do that. <laughs> and when was this? I know we have uh, a 13 year history here. This is like about eight years ago. Eight years ago, yeah. you guys have been in a band together for eight years. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of <laughs> cast changes, you know. Yes. Yeah. Definitely, Some, but you've made it work this very, whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And were you in any other bands prior, or were you were you really from the rock band kit to the real kit? <laughs> uh, as far as drums go, yeah, I oh, used okay. to play guitar and a uh, little bit of bass guitar, and uh, I met Brian. Me and him used to just hang out and play in this storage unit, uh, just. Just up, for up on Route 9 fun. Right next to Alto. <laughs> yeah. Kind of behind Alto music. Yeah. Was that you guys? I could have sworn I. No, I'm just kidding. But that no. is. Uh, yeah. So that's how Brian got involved. And when was this? What was the time oh, frame? Oh, God. That was, even, that was even longer that's ago. That's even more complicated. That's even more complicated than longer ago. Okay. So you guys were friends prior yeah. to Nick, you joining Sound of a Smirk. And then basically, what did Jesse say? We need more people. And you were like, I know a guy. Is that kind of. So that came a lot later. We went through probably about. Me and Jesse have had two other, uh, two three, bassists, three other guitarists, and two other bassists. Yep. <laughs> in the time frame since I I joined. That's a lot of members. Yeah. Um, we don't need everyone's origin story, but I would like to know who came along next in this group that we're hanging out with right now. Who was so we have obviously Jesse, right? He is. Originally, just sound of a smirk. Nick, you come along. <laughs> who 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 joins us next? That would be me. I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. Um, so I've been friends with Jesse and Nick forever now. It's been a really long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, like Nick said, we've been in bands together. Started messing around in a storage unit. It was it was a lot of fun. We're like kind of grew apart. Uh, I was in a pop punk band, like you said, being in the the punk scene in Poughkeepsie. Uh, and I was like, hey, uh, you still playing bass, Nick? And he goes. Yeah, yeah, I am. So he played in, played in that for a little while. <laughs> and then Sound of a Smirk went through another lineup change and one member couldn't be there. So Jesse was like, hey, you still play guitar, right? <laughs> uh, Want to play a show for us in like a week? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is not a joke. That's that not, that's a, not a, a joke. That's not a joke. That's not a joke. Yeah, I learned a couple songs in a couple days, <laughs> and we played outside at a punk rock flea market yeah. out in Connecticut, and that was wild. That yep. was a good time. And then I filled in for a couple more shows, like here and there, and we played a punk rock prom also yeah. out in Connecticut at the space. 
You've been playing with us for almost two years. Yeah. Punk Rock Prom yeah. is my favorite Bowling for Soup B-side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, though. Continue. <laughs> well, it, funny enough, I was still filling in at that point because the bass player and guitar player like were MIA. So Jesse was playing bass. I was playing guitar. and It was just a three-piece. And then finally they were like, hey, do you guys want to like join the band? I'm like, yeah, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll let you know. And then they finally got rid of the bass player and the guitar player because he's moving to a different state, and it got it got weird. It got complicated, like band drama. Yeah, and then you guys counted to three Mississippi, and Pete shows up, right? Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. much out of nowhere, yeah. totally out of nowhere. Well, you so actually, you me, say I'm Pete's Pete. name three times. Yeah, so you Pete, say Pete three times, and I not went, into a mirror though, right? Uh, no, into like an amp or any kind of <laughs> okay. microphone, and I'll just I will show up with uh, any instrument in hand, whatever you need. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so my origin story with this band is. I kind of just like looked around and realized that every single one of my best friends has played in this band. And you know when like all your friends are going to the same restaurant and you're just like, you know what? I should probably check out that restaurant. <laughs> and honestly, the food's pretty good. So like I'm, I'm not upset. <laughs> I like that. That's a good metaphor. Yeah, the food tastes delicious from where I'm sitting. So uh, and uh, he's also kind of played the role of a uh, coach, coach, you know, because we now have whiteboards up in our practice space. Yeah, he, do. you know, points, gives us direction. He watched us at our first three piece show. He came and watched us absolutely bomb <laughs> and just play horribly. Yeah, and positivity. from that moment on, he put on, donned his uh, coach hat. Put and, on my visor. Yeah, he got the <laughs> visor and he was like, I'm going to whip you guys into shape. I love that. Yeah, That's amazing. Here we are. Everyone needs that, and I think it's refreshing to see that like the newest member can just come in and be so impactful. It feels like you guys are kind of all pretty chill about that, and that's that's incredible. I think that that shows maturity. It shows we just want to succeed. We have a drive to always improve. And from when I, from when I first heard you guys till now, it's only gotten better. So I think that's kind of where I'm thank pulling you. that from. Thank you, and, thank um, you. We really appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. So guys, we only have a few minutes left on this interview. Uh, please stick around, everyone. Not only do we have a ton more music for you this evening here on our band show, but we have a second interview coming up, and we have a lot that we're going to talk about, right? I want to talk about what you guys did to survive after we lost, as we said, our beloved Poughkeepsie music scene, you know? It, it, what did you guys do? How did you persevere, make it through that? I know that you guys opened up for Red Jumpsuit Apparatus one time, and I, I definitely want to dissect that night and sort of pick that apart, because, I mean, you know, they're just an absolutely incredible band, and I feel like a lot of the audience members here would love to hear that story. And and on top of that, we'll be introducing uh, my co-producer, Pat, to the stream. So we have a lot coming for you guys. Do not go anywhere. And while you're here, it would cost you nothing. It absolutely mean the world to us if you could please share this video with a friend. Like, subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. And just stick around. Drop a dinosaur in the chat to show the band some love. Dinosaurs in the chat. Drop dinos in the chat. Dinos in the chat. And gentlemen, before we jump into your first set of the night, tell them where they can find you. Keep up to date with all things Sound of a Smirk. Uh, Sound of a Smirk is easily look upable on all social media at Sound of a Smirk on Twitter and uh, X on Instagram on Threads all that jazz Sound of a Smirk dot com. Uh, you can catch um, all the shows that we play. We post on there uh, all the music we release, everything of that sort. So we're we're easily found on cool. all your streaming services as well. And speaking of emo, you'll be able to catch them next Friday night at an emo night. We'll give you more information about that coming up in just a few minutes. But just like Pete joined in 3 Mississippi, I think we all got to count 3 Mississippi and just get into some tunes here on this evening. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, welcome to the first set of the night live here on our band show with Sound of a Smirk. Take it away, gentlemen. Gentlemen. 